Hello booktube, Lynette here and today's video is going to be the mid-year book freakout tag and I'm doing it for 2022. So I apologise if maybe you hear some background noise, I've got my windows open, it's really sunny here in the UK when I'm filming this uh, which is absolutely lovely to have some sun for a change and I thought because I'm doing a tag I thought I would change my location so I'm sat in my lovely reading chair um in my bedroom uh which i'm absolutely loving i curl up here quite regularly uh to sit and read especially when i'm watching live sprints and yeah so i thought this would be the perfect place to film a tag the first question for the tag is the best book that you've read so far this year and um i think this probably sticks out in my mind because it was a recent read but as i've scrolled through the books i have finished so far this year this is the one that actually stands out the most as well and that book is The Dreamweavers by Barbara Erskine. This is historical fiction um, mixed with a modern day timeline. It's about a woman, B, who is, um, she can see ghosts and she helps them to cross over from this world to the next and helps them to find peace. In this storyline, uh, she's called to a property in Wales um, near Offa's Dyke uh, where there is a haunting going on and she comes across the ghost of one of King Offa's daughters. So this is the historical timeline in this is set in the 800s and we're following a young woman in that timeline called Edba who fell in love with a prince from a uh, neighbouring kingdom of Powys um, and it's about uh, the love story uh, for Edba and it's about how B and others around her are caught up into Edba's story and where it goes from there. I used to read uh, Barbara Erskine quite a bit. I binge read quite a few of her novels um, about 15 to 20 years ago now and I kind of burnt myself out on them. Um, but I really love the premise that uh, we are set in this um, mainly medieval history, um, English history, um, and then the present day, and I just got absorbed into this story. Um, I'm not going to go into it too much detail on what I thought about it because it will be part of my June wrap up, so that will come after you see this video, uh, where I will talk about it in more detail there, but definitely um, have thoroughly enjoyed this book and couldn't put it down, and I think it's one of the only books this year that I have literally just have been looking forward to the next time I can sit down with it. It even it even had a moment where I was reading it, I was at work and I just said to my boss, I don't want to be here, I want to go home and read my book, uh, which I haven't done with a book for about two years, I think. So yes, very, very, very good start, um, reading with this one and definitely going to pick up more by Barbara Erskine very soon, but I won't burn myself out on them again. Question number two is the best sequel that you've read this year and for this I'm going to go with Love You Like That by Scarlett Cole. It's the fourth book in her Excess All Areas um, series following the rock band The Sad Fridays and this book is about um, Zoe and Alex and Alex is pansexual. Zoe is deaf or she's losing her hearing, has lost the majority of her hearing and it's about how the two of them, it's about acceptance. Um, it's about how Alex uh, helps Zoe with it, the acceptance of her hearing loss. It's about how Zoe is just completely accepting of Alex and his sexuality. And, and how they build a beautiful friendship and relationship from that. And I just absolutely loved it. Again, couldn't put it down. And it was definitely my best read of May, because uh, I read it in May this year. And I'm looking forward to the next one when it comes out later on this year. Question number three is a new release that you haven't read yet. I don't keep up with new releases. I very, very few new releases I keep up with these days. So I don't actually own any. Um, there are a couple that I haven't bought that I would like to. So Kay Bromberg, who is one of my favourite romance authors. Um, she's had a couple of releases recently that I haven't read and would really like to pick up. Um, 
but owning property means that I can't afford to buy books as and when I want them these days so I do have to think about it a bit more before I purchase them um so yes so that is uh the, that's a book that I want to get my hands on um but other than that um no there aren't any recent releases that I haven't read yet question number four is the most anticipated release for the second half of this year I have two um, that I have on pre-order and that's because I just couldn't not pre-order them. I, I had to have them. The first one is Fury of Aggression by uh, Corrine Callahan. I forgot her name for a moment. Uh, brain, words, go. Um, and this is a fantasy paranormal romance. Uh, it's Dragon Shifters and this book is going to be about Sloan. We're going back to the Night Furies. And Sloan is the IT geek for the uh, this group of dragon shifters and he is going to meet the love of his life, uh, which I've been thoroughly looking forward to. Sloan actually had a previous mate um, and sadly his mate pre um, died before the setting of these books. Uh, but yes, this is his second chance at romance and I'm looking forward to picking it up because I've wanted him to have his happy ever after since I met him. And the other book that is a, a real, I really must get my hands on as soon as it comes out, is Let Me Love You by Scarlet Crowell. This will be the fifth and final book in the Excess All Area series, and this time we are going to follow Ben and Chaya. Uh, ben and Chaya are lifelong friends. Uh, they are best friends. They love the bones of each other, but they are not together because Chaya's dad has warned Ben off and told him he isn't good enough for his daughter and then Chaya becomes engaged to someone else but something is going to bring them back together and Ben is going to either have to man up or make way so I think we know which way it's going to go but I'm looking forward to the getting there Scarlet Cole just seems to know which buttons to hit and her books never fail to make me smile so I'm really looking forward to that one um, which will be an end of the summer read the next question is the biggest disappointment and I was really sad about this one and that is Lathiathan Wakes by James S.A. Corey. This is science fiction set in space and it's a mystery set in space, murder mystery I think set in space um, and it's the beginning of a blockbuster series and it's been um, made into a TV series for Amazon called The Expanse. And I really wanted to love it, but I just, something about it just didn't hit the right note. Um, some of the language, some of the attitude towards women in here, um, for something that's supposed to be futuristic and progressive, completely and utterly wrong. Um, the storyline didn't grab me. I, the characters weren't great. And yeah, um, I had originally held on to this thinking that I might try Caliban's Wall. Um, but no, I actually, I think I'm probably going to unhaul this and I'm probably not, I'm probably going to DNF the entire series, to be perfectly honest with you. I really don't think that I'm going to carry on with this at all, which I'm really sad about because I'd had it on my shelves for ages. And I think maybe I just hyped it up too much in my own mind. Um, so yeah, so it's not a series I'd recommend, unfortunately. And the next question is your biggest surprise of this year. And I have to say it's Nobody But Us by Laura Van Rensburg. I had this as an e-arc from NetGalley. It's a two-handed thriller. We're following a couple who have been together for a little while, um, for a few months. They've decided to go away together for the weekend and they're in this isolated house and nobody is who they seem to be neither of them are who they seem to be so you've got this two-handed um storyline where something happens um and yeah i was just completely and utterly gripped um this was actually a contender for best book of the year so far but it just lost out to the dreamweavers but i absolutely again it was a real page turner for me um, the only thing I didn't like about it was because it was an e-arc, the formatting wasn't great, um, but everything else I absolutely loved and I definitely would like to see more from uh, this author in future um, 
so yeah I'm definitely definitely very very happy uh, that I picked that one up and that I managed to get a copy of that one the next question is favorite new author for this year and I have to say I'm picking two and it's because I've read two books or almost read two books by each of these authors now the first one of those is Madeline Miller I'm holding up Cersei because again it's a recent read it's the second book that I've read by her and it was another one that um, I just devoured I couldn't stop reading it uh, this is about Cersei who is a daughter of Helios the Titan God Helios and she is found to be a witch and she is exiled and it's what she discovers about herself um, during her exile and how the coming of the mortal Odysseus um, affects her life and also Daedalus because he is a mortal who has a real impact on Cersei and I again I just became completely immersed in the world of Greek myth and I couldn't put this book down and I thoroughly enjoyed it and I'm thinking that actually I'm going to ask um, because I'm filming this just before my birthday and my family are now all saying what can we get you so I'm thinking I think is it Galatea I'm thinking about asking one of them to get that for me for my birthday as well and the other author is a discovery for this year and if you've seen my second part of my wrap up for May uh, then you might be able to guess this one but it is John Gwynn I'm holding up Malice which is the first book in The Faithful and the Fallen I am about two thirds three quarters of the way through the second book Valor I have asked for book three for my birthday um, I'm listening to them on audio as well as uh, flicking through the physical copies and I'm thoroughly enjoying it they are high fantasy um, sprawling world full of detail yet you don't feel bogged down by the detail they are easily listened to on audio um somebody said to me i think on a discord channel that uh listening on audio they found it difficult because of all the names but i didn't find that the names were an issue for me i thought they were quite clear and yeah i'm just i'm absolutely loving this and i'm racing through um valor cannot wait to get to ruin um, and then on to Roth because I need to know how this is playing out. Um, this is a series about um, a war that's going to happen in a place called Banish Lands. It's also going to be a god war as well as a human war. And the gods have, both have a representative. One is the Dark Sun, one is the Bright Star. In Malice, you don't really know which is which. You are led right the way down the garden path. Um, and I'm thoroughly enjoyed it um thoroughly enjoyed that part of it and now I'm just kind of like well how do we know this person is the bright star why are all these people convinced that this person is the bright star um so it just there's just so much information that just keeps me reading and I have a feeling that once I've read the faithful and the fallen series I will be moving on to his uh next series um which I think the first one is called the shadow of the gods so definitely a new author that I am absolutely loving and definitely going to keep his books on my shelves alongside my Robin Hobb because alphabetically that's where they sit. Next question is your newest fictional crush. I have two and these books could probably have been put in the biggest surprise as well. Uh, the first one is Adam from The Love Hypothesis. I just loved how he was himself um, with Olive uh he held himself back from everyone else but with olive he let her see the real him he uh allowed her to bring out the best in him and i just loved how sweet he was how generous he was how caring he was uh and was just everything that a love interest really should be for me and yeah again the um, the love hypothesis it was a tick it was a hyped book it's a tiktok sensation it's a cartoonish cover they're all things that I look at and go no not for me um but definitely absolutely loved it and would like to uh, read more about Adam in future the second one is exactly the same um it's Michael from the love hypothesis again for me he just 
embody there was there were flaws in his character for but in the most he actually embodied what a love interest should be he um he was his best self with stella uh he loved stella unconditionally um he accepted everything about her um well maybe not giving all of himself but that was because he was afraid to give all of himself and but he was just so sweet and careful and patient and kind and yeah again the kiss quotient um it's a cartoonish cover it's a hyped book it's a sensation across social media but again i absolutely loved it and i'm looking forward to reading more by helen huang especially um the follow-ups to the kiss quotient because her representation um, in this book for me was fantastic and just describing it to someone in my life who deals with um, autism on a daily basis uh, they actually were very impressed with the little details that I was describing um, so definitely want to read more by Helen Huang um, even if I don't read more by the author of The Love Hypothesis um, but yeah so those are two fictional crushes um that i yet to top this year the next question is newest favorite character and i'm going to say stella from the kiss quotient stella is on the autism spectrum she has asperger's and reading her was like reading a grown-up version of someone in my life um i could easily recognize the parallels between the two and yeah it just gave me such positivity um about it that despite the challenges um that people with autism face um that the world can be an excellent place for them and i just i absolutely love stella for representing that um for me that hope for the future and I just absolutely loved her. I She had flaws. She acknowledged her flaws as well as the autism. Um, and I just, I, I can't put into words just how much reading Stella meant um, and, and how much it actually did for me as, as someone who, you know, deals with someone with autism on a regular basis. Next question is a book that made you cry and I need to get this out very quickly because talking about it makes me cry and that book is A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J Maas. Um, tearing up. Uh, I read this book a few months ago um, and I can't look at the, I'm sorry, I can't look at the camera while I talk about this because it does make me cry. It just makes me cry talking about it. This is about Nesta and it's following on from the A Court of uh, Thorns and Roses series and it's about the mental trauma that Nesta experienced but also it's about how those around Nesta are struggling to help her and that is very close to a personal experience for me and um yeah, uh, it made me cry. Um, I identified very hard with Cassian and with Feyre. Um, and yeah, I, I can't say any more than that other than, um, yeah, I probably won't ever be able to reread that book. And then on to a book that made me happy. And I'm going to say The Kiss Quotient um, by Helen Huang. As I've said um, in the past couple of questions, this book just it was all about the autism rep and it was such a positive vibe for the future that i absolutely loved it and will definitely uh i have definitely recommended it to people in my life who deal with autism and it just made me smile and yeah it just made me hope for the future that um there are other things uh in this book that um are close to the knuckle and I, could, I do need trigger warnings. Those trigger warnings for discuss of it's not sexual violence, but um, yeah, sexual abuse, um, and that does need to be put out there. You need to be aware of that. Um, but just the way that moving forward from that is framed positively, 
um I just this whole book was just a very positive experience for me and I'm very very glad that I read it and the next to last question is your most beautiful purchase this year I haven't bought many books this year um but one of my favorite covers is Electra by Jennifer Saint this is Jennifer Saint's follow-up to Ariadne it is about Electra Clytemnestra and Cassandra um and it's to do with the fallout of Agamemnon's um, actions before he went off to the Ten Year War with Troy. Um, and it's about revenge and it's about the three different views that all three women have of Agamemnon and how his actions colour their lives. And this cover is just beautiful. The foiling, the cover, the colour it's just it has beautiful end papers um it's i mean it, it's only a plain green but with the gold foiling writing and i didn't realize um i didn't spot this uh when i actually pre-ordered it from waterstones but i actually bought the copy that's signed by the author um and yes i have jennifer saint's autograph in the front so I was really, really happy because um, she has done a Waterstones book tour and she didn't come to my local Waterstones. She went to my next nearest Waterstones and I couldn't get there because of the timing, um, because the time of the event uh, would have been too late, uh, too early to, for me to get there from work. So when this came through the door and I had the signed copy, ah, I was just so happy. So yes, this is the most beautiful book that I've added to my shelves this year. And the final question is, what books do you have to read before the end of the year? Um, I'm in a very much a mood reading phase at the moment. So to try and pinpoint books I want to read before the end of the year is a little bit difficult. But what I will say, and this is a recent purchase, we'll say Heartstopper by Alice Oseman. This is volume one. Um, I'm thoroughly influenced. I have been watching a lot of live reading sprints lately and Maddie from a book browsing blog has been on a few of them and she has hyped this book so hard that I had to buy it. I It's, it's a graphic novel, it's not an actual book book, it's a graphic novel book um, and it's LGBTQ+, which I don't normally read either. Um, I hate the fact that it has this permanent sticker on it. Um, but yeah, I had to pick it up and I'm going to give it a go and see if I like it. So I definitely want to read that one very soon. Um, I keep saying I'm going to carry on with my read of the um, Wheel of Time series. I started book six months ago and I've still only read about 20 pages of it. So I need to pick that up. And yeah, spoiler for a video coming in July. I have recently sat down with my Kindle and my shelves and made a note of all my book series so I really need to get some book series sorted and finished and out of the way um I'm not going to pinpoint any in particular but there are definitely some that I want to um make progress with but yeah that's um that's my catch up uh for this year so how have you done so far this year um with your reading uh, how, what would your answers to these questions be? Let me know in the comments box down below. Uh, leave a link to your video if you film this so I can go and watch it too. If you have enjoyed this video, then please don't forget to give my video a like. And if you're not already, then please subscribe to the channel. I would love to have you here. And if you didn't already know, I make videos and I post them at 6.30pm every Monday with the occasional edition like this one thrown in on a Thursday. And I will see you all again in the next one. Bye.